Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Sherry Edwards. I've been providing career coaching services to people pursuing a career change or those needing guidance and moving their careers to the next level for more than 20 years. I've partnered with the IEEE several times to deliver career-related presentations to their members, and I'm glad to be able to connect with you all today. I'm hoping to help some of the, some to help those of you who are struggling with remote work by providing some tips on how to stay focused and more productive during these tough times. My intention is to move fairly quickly today to allow those of you that have taken time away from work to get back to it. Um, if you have questions, please make a note of them and we'll save them till the end and I'll be glad to address them there. So we'll go ahead and get started. Today, um, we'll be covering some basic, some base, basic points to help make your lives a little easier. We'll be covering, first of all, how to get focused, um, some tips for establishing some boundaries, how to manage distractions, um, the, the reason you need to have established goals and be able to plan ahead, and then also managing your own performance and ultimately developing effective habits. Let's talk about some of the things that happen every day. Um, I'm guessing some of your challenges are the interruptions that occur because there's there are family members at home, distractions, whether it's noise, people at the door, phones ringing um, from other parts of the house. You find that you have more things to do than you had planned on. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been having technology breakdowns. They all seem to save themselves for right now. Um, Miscommunications that occur because we're using email and chat more frequently instead of just being able to walk over and talk to people. And then all of that leads to just a, an inability to focus. So these are the general areas we're going to cover today. Oops. We missed one really important point. Yeah. Um, the last, the last point on the list is procrastination. And I just want to mention that now is the time that many things that you have waited for are probably showing up as catching you um, off guard. So another reason why we plan ahead. Okay. Um, let's talk about where you're working. I know that many of my clients are plopped at the kitchen table or in the middle of the living room, which makes it very difficult to establish boundaries for anybody coming in. Um, although those aren't my feet, I have two cats and they're very close to doing exactly what we see here. I've, I've been, they're locked in the basement right now, as a matter of fact, just so you don't hear them screeching. So the most important thing to do when you get started is to define a space that isn't shared by everybody else. It's got to have boundaries so that people are not walking in, out, around, um, and through everything you have to do. Then treat it the same as you would your regular workplace. Clean up after yourself, put things away, make sure other people aren't leaving things on top of your work. It's, it needs to be treated as if it were your regular workspace in the office. And set a schedule. Make sure that you're getting up at the same time every day, that you're starting work at the same time, and you're ending work at the same time. Some of my clients have reported that they're actually working longer hours, which tells me they're either getting distracted during the day 
or they're forgetting that they should be off work. So that may be one of the hardest things I've adapted to having worked at home for 25 years now is recognizing that just because the computer is on doesn't mean I should be working. So make sure you stick to a schedule and that everybody in your household is aware of what that schedule is. You're at work during those hours. The other key point is to establish boundaries that if you are at work, because it is during your, your regularly scheduled work day, let them know that for all non-work related issues that are not urgent, that you are not to be interrupted any differently than if you were in the office and you couldn't be called every five minutes. So if you're being asked to do things that um, normally are not part of what you would be doing while you are at the office, say no. Let them know you're at work and you can address anything later. And this is really part of what is needed to control distractions. If you delegate your um, tasks at home, if you delegate your tasks at home and give them the opportunity to take over some of those things, you, you may find that you're less interrupted. There are also problems that people are going to go to whomever is handy instead of thinking through and learning how to solve problems on their own. So give them the opportunity to exercise their brain and um, get accustomed to solving the simpler things. The other thing that can be a major distraction is social media. Um, I probably get 25 news feeds a day, Facebook, tweet, Twitter. Um, I I find it much more helpful to schedule the time to look at those so that you're not stopped in the middle of getting things done and being distracted by the latest tweet. And this probably is an over, overlying statement that if you have not yet set goals, it could be part of the, the biggest reason why you're not focused. Having um, goals that you are working towards every day helps keep you focused on what it is you really have to get done versus what you'd rather do or what creeps up. So you'll want to make sure that if you have previously established goals with your supervisor, they've probably changed due to COVID. So make sure that whatever was written in December or January has been adjusted so that you know exactly what you're working towards every day. And at the time that you're discussing this with your supervisor, make sure that you have taken into account potential obstacles. Clearly, if you've not worked at home before, working at home without having the appropriate equipment can be a, a hindrance to your achieving the things that they need to get you done. So make sure that they've set you up properly. And also if communications abroad or other pieces of information that you may need that now may not be available could impact your ability to get things done. Make sure you're very, very clear about what it is you need to get done every week so that you're not just starting the week with, oh gosh, what's my plan? Make sure that of the, your objectives towards your goals are clearly defined so that you know whether you've hit them or not. The only way to develop a plan is to know exactly where it is you're headed. So once you have goals and you've set some key objectives, you can break those down into tasks. And your plan needs to be connected to your calendar so that you're very well aware of what your deadlines are. Having some structure that you self-imposed will help you stay focused. If you're unable to establish that structure, I think it's a lot easier to get sidetracked. And again, establishing your own structure can work. You don't need somebody else to tell you when and what to be doing. Once you've established a plan, stick with it. Give it some time to, to work out some bugs, track your, your performance. 
but make sure that you're doing the same thing the same way every day to be able to look back over a week and say, okay, so what worked? If you only attempt a plan for a day and it doesn't work, you're not giving it enough time to really be a valid experiment. So make sure that if you've established goals, broken down key components to those goals into objectives, and then established a plan for the week, you stick with that plan. If anything doesn't get completed during the week, make a note of it. We're going to talk about how to review that and what to do about it in just a bit. Um, I tend to look at a whole year in advance, and clearly that's out the window um, with what's going on today because we can't really know where we're going to be or what we're going to do. Travel plans have been canceled. Meetings have been canceled. So for the to the best of your ability, look out over the month of May. We're just at the beginning of it. Look out over the month of May and recognize what already is established in your schedule that you know you have some weekly meetings set up with stakeholders or with your boss. Put that into your calendar so you're very clear about what has to be done. And then look at your work. What are the deliverables that are expected by the end of May? Let's make sure that you're planning ahead so that you're distributing the work at the right times on the right days. And then, of course, we've written out the plan, but no matter what, things are going to happen and we're going to have to reprioritize. So being flexible and willing to adapt to necessary changes will help you be more successful. Um, one of the, the mantras I've been chanting to my clients is be nimble, be nimble, be nimble. And if any time more than, or if, if necessary, it's really learning just in time performance. It's about as real as it gets right now. So we want to establish timelines. You've looked back. Again, we've looked out over a year for what you might have projected for January. Um, at this point, it can, it can still be there. It just may have to move every month. So it's not a problem to establish some goals and recognize that given our con conditions right now, things may change even in a month. So I strongly recommend that you do look out for the whole year and look at what were we supposed to have gotten done, where were we supposed to be by now, and alter those things as you can. So again, it's creating a structure, and even if it at this moment is a very pliable structure, it makes sure that you're not leaving things off off your list or out of out of view. And if things are impossible to achieve because of our circumstances, that's all the more reason to bring make them more visible and address them with your supervisor so that whatever goals you set for a year that are impossible to achieve are changed and, and your performance will be based on what is real as opposed to what was planned a few months ago before everything blew up. So based on your longer term goals, um, you want to set those weekly objectives. And some of your objectives may be simply to maintain relationships. And one of the things that I've recognized with my clients is they're feeling very isolated. And yet they're first to say, oh, I'm not available for this meeting or that or that meeting. And I want you to take into account that although your schedule may have flipped because you're now at home. In many cases, people are gaining time because they're not commuting. That would be a terrific time to schedule opportunities to communicate with friends or family and make sure that you're maintaining the relationships that are important to you. Make sure that your objectives have components of the projects that you're going to complete. Um, it may, you may be looking for a new job during this time and time invested in your research or training needs to be allocated at well, as well. You may also find that you want to participate in virtual events, plan around these things so that they don't slip through the cracks. Then prioritize everything. 
be very specific about what you want to get done and how all of these objectives um, relate to your longer term goals. And then based on an objective, for instance, if you have a new skill to learn, that would be an objective towards furthering your career, which could be tied to a longer term goal. But if that particular skill requires six weeks of training, then you need to be specific. List what type of training it requires, any homework associated, list all of those tasks, and make sure that you're looking at your calendar and committing to when those things get done. The purpose of this may is for you to establish your own structure. And working at home requires that. No one's watching you. You've still got to get things done. And you've still got to get things done that are important to you. So if you make a commitment for when each task needs to be accomplished, imagine that it is your boss telling you you have to do it if that's what's going to help you get it done. But make a commitment for when it's going to get done so that it doesn't slip through the cracks. If you're not looking at your time and deciding when you'll do something, then you're probably working from a to-do list. And I just absolutely hate to-do lists because what I find is they stay the same every day. You might whittle a couple of things down, but if, if you don't actually apply it to your calendar, then it could go on and on and on and on and on. So uh, I encourage you to break everything down, including personal time. If you need time to exercise, fit it into your calendar so you know when that's going to get done. Your work schedule can be a little more flexible if you're working from home and you're not on the clock per se. So if you decide that it works better for you to take a break midday to do your schedule, your workout, then block that time and make sure you just work a little later to provide your employer with what is designed to get done. If in fact your employer is monitoring your time and you have to take set breaks, which surprised me that that's actually happening where people are blocking or actually clocking out for 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon during their lunchtime, then make sure you're scheduling your personal time before or after you begin work so it doesn't get missed. Don't assume you're going to get to it. One of the other things when we talk about avoiding distractions and you may have kids at home right now, if they're unclear about what your schedule is or what you have to accomplish, then help them out, post your schedule, let them know when you'll be working and they can also act as if you are in the office at work away from them so that they're not interrupting you unless there's an emergency. And then don't deviate, don't allow interruptions one day and not another because it gets very confusing. I think one of the biggest challenges my clients are having right now is for those with younger children that are now having to be homeschooled and both parents work, it's it's kind of a mess. And I think that to the best of your ability, you may have to swap times to have that uninterrupted time to work, adjust your schedules accordingly. But whatever that looks like, the key is so that your kids get used to it. Um, is that you don't deviate from it so that it becomes regular for them. I'm, I'm, I'm not a parent, but I have worked with people with kids for 30 years now. And one of the things that I have learned is their kids appreciate structure. So by posting your schedule, Using a calendar and showing them what your work is, is going to be like helps engage them in your success. And again, your success means they get food on the table. So I encourage you to be as transparent about what you're doing as you possibly can. And here's a snip of a, a Google calendar where time is actually blocked for specific meetings. The key would be, and perhaps this is on a paper calendar next to you, is to take the in-between times and block out when you're actually going to accomplish the different components of your job. So make this um, visible to your um, family or anyone in your household that may need to know when you can't be interrupted. To get focused, 
I, again, I'm suggesting that you, you write down everything you need to do. And then every day review what your plan is for the day so you're very clear about what needs to get done every hour. And then hold yourself accountable. If it didn't get done, it doesn't get crossed off and it doesn't automatically go to the next day. You may have to reevaluate where in your schedule that a, an unfinished task is going to best be performed. So make sure that you're tracking what you do get done. Um, if a task took longer than you had anticipated, make a note of it. Make a note of why you think that happened. On Friday, you're going to review your results every week and see where you are according to what you had planned and what you really did accomplish. And then going into the next week, you can adjust what your projections are as far as how much time it takes to do each thing and make them more realistic. No one else is going to be doing this for you. If your supervisor needs you to get something done, in their mind, it's done or it isn't done. For you, it may be half done and you really need to recognize where you're going to complete it so that you can get back to whomever the deliverable is meant for to say it will be done by this time. I would, and again, in, in this instance, if you're having specific challenges that are outside of your control, you need to be able to address them. To address them efficiently, make sure that you record them so you can talk to your supervisor about it. And again, adjust your next week's schedule accordingly so that you're able to more accurately um, predict when you're going to do things. And as it turns out, what times of day don't work out. I've been working at home for, as I mentioned, actually 30 years now. And it's just the way it is for me. And I started analyzing each component of what allows me to do it. And one is I'm very goal oriented. I like results. I like to be able to check things off and make sure they're done. There's a feeling of accomplishment that I can give myself that I don't get because I'm not in the workplace with anyone around me um, acknowledging what I do. Nobody really knows what I do. So by making it very clear what I need to get done and then checking off what I do, I can experience that on my own. I also am able to track when particular times of day um, certain tasks are a little more difficult than others. So that's something to keep in mind is that if you have your highest energy in the morning, then put your hardest work there. The key here is to develop new, new habits. And I have a picture of something hardwired because a habit takes 28 to 30 days to develop. Once it becomes a habit, it's because it's auto, it's automatic. I automatically perform the same things every day. Uh, the day before I review what I got done, what I didn't get done, anything that didn't get completed gets rescheduled and put on a different day. So I don't have to think about that when I start the next day. I look at what time do I need to start work? When do I have appointments? What do I need to get done? And that allows me to sleep in an extra half hour sometimes because I know in advance exactly how hard my day is going to be. Or I get up earlier because I know it's going to be a, di a difficult day or with more meetings than normal. Again, looking at your work as part of the habit, making sure that your schedule stays the same every day so that you're very clear about what, what works best is part of the habit. You've got to keep doing it to see how successful you'll, you'll be at it. Again, doing this every day for a full month is going to help you look at what things need to change, if your hours need to be adjusted, if you're missing your workout because you're too tired by the end of the day, then reconsider your schedule to evaluate where you can fit things in. But this isn't going to be autopilot for you if you're just starting. I mentioned that I've been doing this for 30 years. So it is for me, but that's a long, long time to be accustomed to a, creating a schedule and then adjusting to it. So give yourself some time to catch on. So we have some time left, and I'm glad to entertain questions. If you'd like to ask anything specific, I'd be glad to accept that through chat. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not sure if you have access to that. Um, there we go. You can type your question in the comments section below. I know there was someone who had sent me a question before we began today, and I want to make sure I addressed it. His concern was that he had a, a high school age um, youngster at home, and the individual was really unfocused. And I'm hoping that some of the structures that I've presented today will help alleviate that inability to focus because they're there will be more to work within. So if that person is online right now and can send me a message, okay, then that'd be great. Um, right now, there aren't any questions coming through. So we'll go ahead and say, have a good day the rest of the day and appreciate your attention today. Thanks so much.